Testing, testing, testing.
this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can we stand now just to give God some glory and to praise him for all that he's done for us? Can remember what happened yesterday, the day before, and the day before that, how he kept us through those days? And is there anybody know anything about months and years of how God has kept us? And because he's kept us, we don't have a problem saying amen. I know there's an amen in the house. And how about a hallelujah every now and then? Somebody came in here to give God glory on this special day. Not only are we honoring our pastor for 55 years, but we're giving God glory for every year. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Welcome the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Certainly God has been good to us and he's keeping us even right now. And what a wonderful day that we have to celebrate our pastor and first lady. We're going to begin our service by inviting Brother Melvin Shepherd to introduce the worship leader. And then the worship leader is going to take it from there. Turn to your neighbor and say, I came ready. Good morning, Evergreen. Good morning. Oh. I always thought that speaking in front of strangers was hard, but I'm speaking in front of family today, so. Right. So I'm not nervous anymore. <laughs> it's my esteem honor to introduce the worship leader for the 55th pastoral anniversary of Dr. Guy Campbell Jr. And I'm happy that I've been alive for 26 years of that pastoral career. Amen. The worship leader for today is not only a sister of Evergreen, but a hardworking member of this church family and a hardworking member in general. A lot of people have known her throughout the years, but I have the esteemed pleasure of calling her my own mother. Trustee Denise Shepard, I hand this service over to you. Good morning, Evergreen. Would everyone please stand as we introduce the honorees? Please welcome Reverend Guy Campbell, Jr and Deaconess Dorothy Campbell for their 55th Astoria anniversary. Another round of applause. At this time, we will have the hymn of praise followed by scripture reading.
have the scripture reading by, by Deaconess Karen Ray, followed by pastoral prayer, Deacon Roland Eubanks, followed by selection by the Campbell's Inspirational Choir. God and praise God for all that he has put in you to put into us. Um, the Campbell's Inspirational Chorus are dedicating our songs today to you, songs that you love. So we just wanted you to know that. God bless. I will be reading Hebrews, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first to the 17th verse. And I'm reading from the new Amplified Study Bible. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Remember those in prison as if you were there also. Remember also those being mis mistreated as if you felt their pain in your own bodies. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Don't love money, but be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can, more people, what can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the examples of their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those who follow them. We have an altar from which the priests in the tabernacle have no right to eat. Under the old system, the high priest brought the blood of animals into the holy place as a sacrifice for sin, and the bodies of the animals were burnt outside the camp. So also Jesus suffered and died outside the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. So let us go out to him outside the camp and bear the disgrace he bore. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. And our 17th verse, which is our theme, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. May the word be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come as humble as we know how to thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our lying down last night for waking us up to see another day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, and all of your mercies, Lord. We thank you this morning, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to call upon your holy and your righteous name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for blessing each and every one of us one by one, Lord. Our families, our loved ones, our children, and our grandchildren. Lord, we thank you for the folks that's here today, Lord, those that may be on the way, and those that are watching remotely. We, Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit into the service today, Lord. Not that you need an invitation, Lord, because you're already here, Lord. Lord, I want to pause this morning to recognize our pastor, Dr. Kai, Guy Campbell, Jr., and our First Lady, Deaconess Dr. Dorothy S. Campbell, Lord, on their special day. Lord, this couple has preached, they have taught, they have served, and they have lived by the gospel, Lord. And they have shepherded this congregation for over 50, 55 years, Lord. And we thank God for them today, Lord. Lord, uh, today, Lord, they are worthy of our, our appreciation, Lord. Today, Lord, they are worthy to be honored, Lord. We thank God for them. 
Now, Lord, I ask you to send down a word from heaven to the man of the hour, Lord. Pastor Hendricks, Lord, a word that would be of encouragement to your people, Lord. A word that would send us home today feeling better about ourselves and about our situation, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to look on, look on us today just a little while longer, Lord. Help us to know and help us to realize that thou art God, and besides thee, there is no other. Lord, um, I ask you in the name of Jesus for forgiveness for our sins, for we all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. But although we were sinners, Lord, you had mercy on us, and you called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. And for this, we say thank you, Lord. So, Lord, today, help us to, to walk right, Lord. Help us to talk right. Help us to give right and help us to live right. Because we know not the day or hour when the Son of Man is coming back, Lord. Help us, Lord, to walk upright and to look to the hills for whence cometh our help. Lord, I ask you to continue to bless this great nation, the United States of America, Lord. Our, our president our Vice President, all of our leaders, Lord. Lord, I ask you today to continue to bless this great church, the Evergreen Baptist Church, this body of baptized believers in Christ Jesus. Lord, let us all lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, Lord, and let us run with patience the race that's been set before us. Let us run with grace, let us run with poise, let us run with faith, and let us run with joy. And when this race is over, Lord, when we've done all that you've asked of us to do here on earth, take us home to be with you in paradise. And we will forever and ever give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
have the announcements by Deaconess Anissa Haynes, recognition of visitors, Deaconess Joyce Patrice Clark, followed by a presentation from the pastor's aide. In that order, please. Good morning, Evergreen. Good morning. The announcements for the week of April 14th and beyond are as follows. Today we are celebrating 55 years for our pastor and our first lady. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. And we have Reverend Dr. Milton L. Hendricks with us today. What a blessing. Blessing. On Monday at 6.15, there will be youth choir rehearsal. At 7 p.m., there will be senior choir rehearsal. On Tuesday at 6.30, there will be spiritual jubilee rehearsal. And on Wednesday at 7.45, we will have our prayer and praise service via our conference line. And on Saturday, the celebration continues. At 12 o'clock at Adelphia's in Deford, there will be a banquet to celebrate our pastor and first lady yet again. Amen. Amen. And the keynote speaker will be Reverend Dr. William J. Shaw. Amen. 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 Sunday school, please note that Sunday school classes are in session every Sunday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. We have youth, teens, and adult classes. Please come out and join us, the Board of Christian Education. Save the date. On Sunday, May the 12th, we'll be celebrating Mother's Day, and our own Deaconess Beverly Gosnell will be our speaker. Amen. Praise God. We're asking special prayers for Andre Jordan. This is the son of our own sister, Michelle Keys. He was in a car accident, so the family is asking for your prayers. Her and her husband are here today, so please just keep that family in your prayers. They need us right now. Our sick and shut-in. We have with us today Sister Ella Ransom and Sister Willa Austin Witherspoon. Amen. Amen. I see Brother Bruce Hunt is here today. Amen. It's always good when we read off our sick and shut-in list and some of those members are actually celebrating with us for the day. Sister Harriet Nickens, Brother Calvin Jones, Brother Leroy Hall, Sister Devlin Hall, Brother Tony Wright, Reverend W. Constance Jewell, Brother Irvin Jones. Who's here? Oh, Reverend Jewell, praise God. Right in front of me. Amen. Praise God. And they were actually out uh, one night this week for our weeknight services. So it is a blessing to see you. Amen. 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 God bless you, Dr. Jewell. Sister Athena Carson. Sister Joe Miller is out in the foyer welcoming our guest this morning. Amen. 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 Sister Wanda Fisher, Deaconess Gladys Carr, Deacon Roosevelt Walker, Deaconess Laverne Walker, Sister Betty Wilson, Brother Daryl Daniels, Sister Eula Pritchett, Sister Dawn Santana, Deaconess Janice King, Deaconess Morning Sun Sanders. As always, please continue to keep our sick and shut in in your prayers. God bless you. This ends the announcements. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't hear you. Good morning. I heard you, Pastor. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. That's one of your numbers. Uh, this is a time when we all can participate. No, it's not offering, it's the welcome. Certainly we welcome our visitors that are at home, but those that are here, I would like for all the visitors that are here, please stand. Amen. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, okay, you may be seated, unless you want to give some remarks. I oh, see he didn't want to give remarks. Oh, we do have someone who wants to give remarks. All right. Thank you, and thank you, and welcome. And this is where our members can be involved. You saw the ones that are here that, is, that are visitors. Make sure to give them a personal welcome before the day is over, just to let them know that we are a loving, welcoming church. And I know for uh, Reverend Dr. Hendricks to be here is special for Pastor Campbell and Deaconess Campbell because they are close, they have been friends for, well, pastor's only 39, so for at least 39 years, they, they have been, he's, yeah, Teresa, he's younger than you. Um, at least for that long of time, they have been friends, and almost like brothers. So that means that uh, Reverend Dr. Hendricks and Sister Hendricks are like our uncle and aunt. Hey, Unc, how you doing? Hi, Auntie, how are you? And certainly traveling with them is Reverend Dr. Cheatham and his lovely wife. So y'all are like our first cousins, too. So we're all a family because we're all under God's love and God's care. So I just want to say welcome to you all. And I know you're going to enjoy the service because Uncle can preach, OK? so. Let us continue celebrating Deaconess Campbell, Pastor Campbell. You know we love you. And I can't, I know, uh, what's her name? Is back there, uh, Deaconess Pratt. But neither one of us can say that we are favorite today because Sister Teresa is in the house. So don't tell her that we think we're her mom's favorite. So to God be the glory. And, and let's enjoy the service and let's just, Give Pastor Campbell and Deaconess Campbell a round of applause. Thank you. So many, many years ago, four strong women who were um, affectionately known as the Evergreen Baptist Church Golden Girls voluntold us that we had to be a part of this ministry. <laughs> Three have since gone on to be with the Lord. But the one who still remains, Deaconess Betty Rosser, is determined to continue in the spirit of which we were formed. Deaconess Campbell, in Philippians, the second chapter, the third verse, it tells us that we should live selflessly and not in vain, and that we should always put others in front of ourselves. And that is exactly what you do for us, Deaconess Campbell. Amen. We love you so very much. There's no gift on this earth that we could repay God for giving you to our church. We love you, and we adore you. Also, uh, Pastor Campbell, once again, we've been asked that if you could please grace us with a song at the end of the service, we'll be uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> We will now have the introduction of the guest speaker by Minister Mark Williams, followed by selections by the Spiritual Jubilees and Campbell's Inspirational Choir. Greetings 
to the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. It is preaching time. And my task is one of these, and that is to introduce the man of God to the people of God. But first, I would like to congratulate Pastor Reverend Dr. Guy Campbell and First Lady Deaconess Dorothy S. Campbell on 55 years of effective preaching and teaching. Thank you for your faithfulness and your continued commitment to your calling of edifying, strengthening, and encouraging the people of God with the word of God. We love you, and we greatly thank you for all that you do for us. Amen. Now, now, I met this gentleman a few years ago when I drove Pastor Campbell down to Pleasantville to preach his anniversary service. Upon meeting Reverend Hendricks, I found him to be a very humble and pleasant man, a pleasure to be around. And as you can read in his bio, he has a great body of work for the kingdom of God. He is a great friend and supporter of our pastor. He has served with Pastor Campbell in many capacities in our local, state, and national conventions. He is an anointed man of God and a dynamic preacher. So it is my honor, my privilege, to introduce to some and to present to others the beloved and esteemed pastor of the Faith Baptist Church of Pleasantville, New Jersey, Reverend Dr. Milton L. Hendricks. His will be the next voice you will hear after the choir shall have ministered to us in song. God bless and amen. Good morning. Good morning. This is an insert into the program. I'm standing on behalf of the 55th Pastoral Anniversary Committee to give you some last instructions. This is today is our pastor and Deaconess Dorothy Campbell's anniversary, but the grand finale is next week Amen. on Saturday, April the 20th at 12 noon to 4 p.m. at the Adelphia's Event Hall in Deford, New Jersey. So I'm coming to you to give you just a little bit of instructions. We will have hors d'oeuvres served between 12 and 1. So if any of you want those goodies, you need to be there by at least 11.45 because they will start serving them from 12 to 1. Also, for those who want to coordinate colors, our colors were silver, black, and an accent teal. We have seven seats left on the van, and we would hope that you would give our seniors who don't drive first preference. Seniors meaning over 60, 65. Seniors meaning over 60, 65. <laughs> so the van will leave the church at 1045 on Saturday. 1045 on Saturday. We would hope that all final payments are made today. We need all final payments made today for the tickets. But if you do want a ticket, I have one for you. But you have to give me the money today. Amen. So we thank you for coming and we thank you for um, being able to celebrate with us on Saturday. And we hope to see you there. God bless. Hallelujah. Pastor Campbell, I love you and Deaconess Campbell. Amen. And you know this is for you because I know God has done this for you. And for all of us here, God is good. Amen. And he's good all the time. Yes, yes. yes, so. I know that 
God, my God, God is good. Oh, God, my God, God is good. You know that he brought me out of darkness. God is good. Come on, put your hands together. You know that he saved my soul. God is good. Yeah. Said he saved my soul. Uh-huh. God is good. I said that he saved my soul. And then he brought. You know that he guides my every footsteps. God is good. I said that he guides my every footsteps. God is good. I said that he guides my every footsteps. Then he saved my soul. And then You know he put food on your table. God is good. Yes. Said he put food on your table. God is good. I know he's good. I said he put food on my table. Then he put shoes on my table. So he God is good. 
To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life, to our very capable worship leader, to Reverend Gosnell, to Dr. Cheatham, to Reverend Yule, to the ministerial staff of the Evergreen Baptist Church, to Chairman Josh Robinson, to Chairperson Barbara Wright, to Sister Rudell Johnson, Sister Maria Happy Security Pratt, <laughs> to all the officers and members of the Evergreen Baptist Church and to all of you, my father's children, I do greet you in the wonderful and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I come realizing that I'm not here by chance, nor by accident. I'm not here because I'm such a great preacher. I'm not here because of any great works that I've done, but I'm here by the grace of God. For well, grace woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Grace has been keeping me all day long. If I leave here to be by that same grace, for I have come to realize that my God's grace is sufficient and whatever I need, he's got it. So all I have to do is live according to his word and victory shall be mine. Certainly we honor the honorees, Reverend Dr. Guy Campbell Jr. and Deaconess Dr. Dorothy S. Campbell. The honorees, we praise God for Dr. and Mrs. Campbell. Can you just stand? And just let us praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I am so honored, happy, and humbled to be a part of this 55th pastoral anniversary celebration. I thank Dr. Campbell for honoring me and allowing me to come one more time to the Evergreen Baptist Church where I feel the spirit of the Lord all the time. And uh, you've had a wonderful week of services. I, I heard about the service on Monday night. I was able to see it virtually on Wednesday night when Dr. Holland talked about a dialogue with a spiritual father. And then I was blessed to be in the house on Friday evening as Pastor Moore blessed us how to encourage the pastor. And so we are honored to be here. I want to thank uh, Dr. Campbell for his faithfulness, for his dedication, not only to the Evergreen Baptist Church, but to the body of Christ at large. He deserves to be honored. Amen. And I'm, I'm so glad that I can call him brother, that I can call him friend, and if I have to, I can call him pastor. I thank him for what he's done for me, the friendship and the fellowship that we have enjoyed. Uh, he's been here 55 years, and I met him when I was five years old. So, uh, <laughs> amen. Well, we thank the Lord for, for the work that he has done in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm certainly honored uh, to be a part of this anniversary celebration. And certainly, we look forward to Saturday afternoon. Uh, being with you again. Amen. I, I want to thank uh, those individuals from faith uh, who have come to share this morning. Uh, Dr. and Mrs. Mark Cheatham, his wife Ann, God bless you. Uh, to Deacon and Deaconess Johnson who are here with us this morning. Delighted to have them with us. Trustee Eugene Cook, so happy to have him with us this morning. Amen. It, it's just a blessing uh, to be here. Now, y'all look down. Y'all were doing a whole lot of talking and shouting and singing a few minutes ago. Just look down your row and make sure the person on that row is alive. <laughs> Amen. 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 Anything dead ought to be in the cemetery. Amen. And we've come to make a joyful noise uh, to the rock of our salvation. We are once again. Oh, I'm, I'm great. Get myself in trouble.
June the 3rd, 1972, at the Union Baptist Temple Church in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Reverend Matthew O'Neill and Reverend Isaac S. Cole united me to the most beautiful woman in the world, my queen of 51 years. Stand up, sweetheart. Amen. And so, we'll, we'll soon be together 52 years. And that's the second best decision I've made in my life. The first was to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior, amen. So I certainly want to honor her. So happy to see Stacy and Teresa here uh, this morning. God bless you both, and we're happy to see you. I want to, uh, I want to get to the word if y'all don't mind, amen. I want to invite our attention this morning to the book of Habakkuk, uh, the second chapter. In the third verse, you will find these words, the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, and verse number three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not. And I want to talk about want to talk about this morning or preach about this morning, a passionate shepherd with a clear vision. A passionate shepherd with a clear vision. Have you ever been frustrated on your journey, only to be encouraged to see a road sign? indicating that there's only a few more miles to go. If so, then you should appreciate the role of the prophet, pastor, or preacher who stands on the watchtower each Sunday morning and gives a clear vision of the road that you are traveling. Often we start on a journey and we prepare ourselves well we pack sufficient clothing, provide for our meals, and for our lodging. We even use maps and GPS systems to precisely, precisely point out our destination. So is the road of life. We prepare ourselves for the journey, but every now and then we get a little off course. Every now and then we stray in the wrong direction. Thank God that we have pastors and prophets who every now and then when they see us traveling in the wrong direction will stand and warn us about the direction that we're traveling. For the past 55 years, Pastor Campbell has mounted the pulpit and has said to you that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And my brothers and sisters, our message this morning comes from the book of Habakkuk, who was one of the 12 minor prophets. And sometimes we don't pay too much attention to the minor prophets. Uh, we get that word major and minor mixed up. We think that because they are minor prophets, uh, that their message is not too much. But my brothers and sisters, in this record, the only difference between a major prophet and a minor prophet is that the major prophets wrote more. But God doesn't call a prophet without giving him a clear vision. And all of these prophets had different types a personality. Uh, whenever I look at the life of Vaca, he reminds me of a Baptist church meeting. Maybe not here at Evergreen. You know, the pastor can be mapping out the course that the church is going to travel and things seem to be going along just fine. But every church has one person that will stand up and try to start some confusion. 
And, and so Habakkuk was that type of person. He was a prophet of God, but he had this nagging uh, personality that he was always questioning God. Now, I guess I suppose it's okay to question God, but I've learned in my journey not to question God, but just to realize that he's God all by himself. And if he's telling me to do something, I ought to just do it. I do it because he's God. I do it because he has all power of heaven and earth in his hand. I do it because he's omniscient. I do it because he's omnipresent. I do it because he speaks no lies. He only tells the truth. So if God tells me to go, I'm gone. And so Habakkuk begins to question God. Are you going to punish those of us who have been faithful to you while those who have been our enemies seem to prosper. And my brother, brothers and sisters, doesn't it seem like that sometimes? When we pray, pay our tithes, go to church each and every Sunday morning. But then we see those folk who don't even know the Lord. They seem to be prospering. And we're struggling just trying to get along. That that would cause the average person to question God. And so Habakkuk questioned God, are you going to bless our enemies and let us continue in trouble? And what I like about God is when we start complaining, when we start grumbling, and when we stop, God says, as I was saying, Habakkuk, and sometimes we ought to just listen to what God is telling us. And he said, you just got to wait a while. You don't know who I am. I see that you're in trouble, but just wait a while. And when I show up, I'll be right on time. When I show up, I'll make a difference. And so as we're traveling this road to glory, uh, we are not worried about the hardships that we're going to face. And, uh, you know, I, I want to tell you, I'm glad that I have to face hardships every now and then. Somebody say, well, Reverend, that's crazy. Why would you want to have trouble in you? Well, if I never had no trouble, I'd never know the Lord could scratch off his hand and say, peace be still. And even the winds and the waves will obey his will. Life may be a blur if we lose certain sight of our objective. Our energies and activities are spread out over a variety of patterns that are blundered and unclear. The passionate pastor helps us to see the vision clearly. Standing on the watchtower, he helps us keep our objectives insight when we fail to concentrate our energies. The vision, the vision may be nearsighted. Habakkuk stood on the tower so that he could put some distance between himself and the vision. He didn't want to fall victim to spiritual nearsightedness. The nearsighted can't see their goal. Right. They can only see things that are close to them. Right. They live for today. Yeah. Therefore, their energies are not concentrating on achieving a goal well. because all they can see is today. Right. They follow the general creed that they should eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow may never come. The Holy Spirit inspires the pastor to help correct our nearsightedness as we focus clearly on those things that are present as well as in the distant future. The pastor is spiritually 
farsighted. The farsighted person is just the opposite. He or she is able to see the goal, but can't see how to manage the daily flow of time, talents, and resources to achieve the goal. They see the goal, but can't discipline themselves to make it happen. They see the NFL, but can't focus on high school and college education that comes before the NFL. God's spiritual glasses correct this flaw in our spiritual sight and help us get control of our lives now in preparation for the future. Unlike a physically farsighted person, the prophet is able to see the big picture and is able to focus on the details as well. The prophet not only sees the vision, but has the task helping those learn of the revelation to see and understand what God wants. This is often a challenge because the prophet is shown things from his watch post that others may not understand. Passionate pastors look for ways to give us snapshots of what the vision will be. Without these things, it's a difficult for the believers to follow it all. Often the prophet becomes the example or the snapshot for the congregation to study. These are the instances when it says, follow me as I follow Christ. The passionate preaching of the pastors help us to start picturing ourselves differently. We see ourselves as happy families. We see ourselves as content and fulfilled. Pastors don't see us the way we are, but continue to show us our potential. That's what he fully realized the meaning of 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. That says, for now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face the face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. It means we can't see the fullness of God, but the prophet can. And he tells us that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on and stay with me just for a little while. Thank God for the prophet preacher who mounts the pulpit every Sunday morning. And I want you to know that whenever Jesus tried to instruct his disciples, he went up into a mountain so that he could look down on the people. Not looking down on them as individuals, but so that they would have to look up. There's something about looking up to the heavens. There is something about looking up to the man of God because he has a, a clear vision from God. And that's why he gives the vision to the pastor and not to the people because the pastor doesn't listen with his outer ear, but he listens with his heart so that when the Lord gives him instructions, he can pass the instructions on to the people. And so for 55 years, Dr. Guy Campbell Jr. has mounted the watchtower every Sunday morning and began to proclaim the word of God 
when he sees you weary and worn, he'll look at you and say, come unto me, all ye that are labored and are heavy laden. Take my burden upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you get in trouble and when the enemy gets in your hand, he'll mount the pulpit and say, no weapon formed against you may prosper. Sometime God will use his man or woman just to encourage you in the time of trouble. Trouble is going to come, but God tells Habakkuk, just tell the people that said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I'm so glad that I've learned how to wait on the Lord. Is there anybody here who learned how to wait on the Lord? He may not come when you want him to come. He may not come when you think he ought to come. But when he comes, he'll be right on time because he's an on-time God. I'm so glad that the Lord sends prophets every now and then who will encourage us, who will challenge us, and tell us to learn how to wait on the Lord. I'm so glad when Satan got busy and destroyed man and destroyed women. God just kept on saying, wait on the Messiah. He's going to come after a while. And then when he came, people were still in doubt because sin had not been paid for. I know I'm in the Old Testament, but, but I learned as a young boy, before I go to my seat, I got to stop by Calvary just for a little bit. When I was lost, with no weapon in my hand, no way to get my life in order, thank God for the prophet preacher who told me to hold on to God's unchanging hand. He came down through 40 and two generations, went before King Herod, went before Pilate's Pilate, he went up to Mount Calvary, stretched his hands. They nailed his hands. They nailed his feet. They pierced him in the side. They laid him on a rugged cross, and they were doing good as long as Jesus was on the cross. But where his enemies made their mistake is when they lifted the cross up off the ground. They forgot that Jesus said, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Dr. Campbell, thank you for lifting the Savior up. Dr. Campbell, thank you for lifting the Savior up. Thank you for preaching good tidings. Thank you for bringing us a word uh, for the future. You've taught us to hold on, hold on. He's coming. Anybody here believe that the Lord will make a way? Anybody here? Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here who know him as a doctor in a sick room? Do you know him? Do you know him? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? You ought to shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Dr. Campbell, you've been doing it for 55 years. Keep on lifting the Savior up. Keep on preaching with power. Keep on walking by faith. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he's a compassionate shepherd with a clear vision. Hang with him. He'll take you home. Hang with him. You'll see a brighter day. Hang with him, and the sun will shine again. Hallelujah. 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 Been good to me. Hallelujah. 
keeps on making a way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Like a ship tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and its furies fall upon me, I wonder what I've done that makes this race so hard to run. Then my soul says, take courage. The Lord will. I said, the Lord will. The Lord will. Yes, he will. The Lord will. The Lord will heal the sick. The Lord will deliver the unsaved. The Lord will make a way out of no way. The Lord will be a shelter in the time of storm. The Lord will be a bridge over troubled water. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. The Lord will. I said, 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 the Lord will. The Lord will. Yes, he will. He'll make a way out of nowhere. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody may be here today. You're searching and searching for the answers to life issues. I want to invite you today to come on the Lord's side to become a part of the Evergreen Baptist Church where the prophet preacher mounts the pulpit every Sunday morning and gives us a word of hope, a word of looking into the future uh, to remind us that God has not forsaken us, but he's still on our side. And all you have to do is lift your eyes to the hills from which come up your help and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help, no other help I know. If there's someone here today and you know that you're not saved and you don't have a church home, I want to let you know that the Lord loves you today. He can save you right here and right now. And in order to be saved, all you need to know are the ABCs of salvation. A, you must admit that you are a sinner. And you may ask the question, how long have you been a sinner? And according to scripture, we've been sinners since day one. The Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. B, you must believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on a rugged cross, buried in Joseph's new tomb. But on the third day, just like he said he would, he arose with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And see, you must confess him as Lord and Savior. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in the 10th chapter, the 9th through the 11th verse in the book of Romans, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. And as we rest upon our feet today, if there's one today you know that you're not saved and you desire to be saved, we simply ask that you would step out on faith today and come to Jesus. Jesus will change your life. Jesus will give you new directions. He'll save you from a life of sin. All you have to do is to trust him today. Is there one who's never been saved? Never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Won't you come today so that we can counsel with you, so that we can minister to you, and your life will never be the same? Is there one today never been saved? 
never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is your hour. This is your day. Won't you come? This could be the first day of the rest of your life. Not saved. Not in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Is there one today? Don't worry about what somebody else is going to say or do. They don't have a heaven nor a hell to place you in. Is there one today? Never been saved. Is there one today? Maybe you're here and you're already saved. But today you have no church home. Dr. Campbell and these offices and the members extend an invitation for you to come to be a part of the Evergreen Baptist Church. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come on your Christian experience. Or you can come by letter. Is there one today looking for a church home? We bid you to come. In Jesus' name, is there one today? Is there one today? The door of the church is open. Is there one today? Is there one today? The door of the church is open. Don't let this moment pass you by. Jesus wants to save you. He wants to make your life brand new. He won't force his way into your heart, but if you invite him, he'll come in. Is there one today? Is there one today? I want to invite those of you who stand in the need of prayer to make your way to the altar today. Prayer changes things. Prayer makes a difference. You stand in need of prayer. You may come at this time. Is there one today? Is there one today? Let us bow in prayer. Eternal and gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another Sunday that we can enter your sanctuary where we can humble ourselves and bow in your presence to say, Lord, thank you for another day of life. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to approach your throne. And Father God, as we come today, we ask, oh God, that you would look upon each and every one in this congregation. And whatever the need is, Lord, we pray that you will meet that need right now. Those who are on their bed of affliction, we pray, Lord, that you would heal them. Father God, those who are under bondage, we pray that you would deliver them. Move throughout this congregation right now, Father God, and bless those who stand in the need. Help us to leave here determined to walk by faith and to put our trust in you. And Father God, we, as we prepare now to close this prayer, we thank you for Dr. and Deaconess Campbell who have labored in this vineyard for the past 55 years. Father God, we thank you for their witness. We thank you for their life. We pray now, Lord, that you would continue to bless them, that you would continue to strengthen them and to use them as an instrument of your praise, peace. And whatever they stand in the need of, we pray that you would supply that need right now. Now, Father God, bless us and keep us until we call upon that great name again. For it's in the name of Jesus that we ask all of these blessings. And the people of God say it together. Amen. God bless you.
Amen, church. Amen. Reverend Milton, thank you so much for that exceptional message. A passionate shepherd with a clear vision. And yes, Pastor Campbell for 55 years has had a clear vision. And thank you for the guidance. Let's give him a, a, number, a round of applause again. Thank you so much. <laughs> now we're at the um, part of the service where we all get a chance to participate. We will now have the ushers take charge. After that, the offertorial offering prayer by Deaconess Lucretia Sunny. Amen. There's also white envelopes for the speakers, so if you have not received one, please raise your hand so the ushers will be able to give you envelopes for the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> 